Hey everyone, the name's Eric Dorr and allow me to in this video show you what the grip of sensing really looks like and why we actually fall into it. Because a lot of people, uh, as we know, intuition is something that is stimulating inherently to an intuitive type. An intuitive finds intuition to be stimulating, pleasant, fun, engaging, refreshing, invigorating, energizing. A sensor finds sensation to be fun, pleasant, amazing, thrilling, exciting. And that's the case, that's the case that intuitives and sensors are going to respond differently to intuitive and sensitive, uh, sensing thought. Uh, it's the case that intuitives are going to thrive in different environments than sensors and from different activities. It's that intuitives require intellectual discussions, it's that intuitives require to go deep on things, to process things deeply, that intuitives want to see behind the lines, to read behind what, the, what is written, to hear behind what you just said, to notice patterns uh, that nobody else has spotted, to find out secrets that are often hidden from us. And that's the case, it's the uh, case that we find sensing, to be frank, boring. In itself, sensing is hugely boring and draining for this intuitive type. Uh, we would rather not have to deal with it. So how do we fall in the grip of it? A lot of descriptions have hinted at it, but few actually understand the reason. Um, the reason we fall in the grip of sensing is due to anxiety or stress. Often, a lot of people, and this is actually very fascinating, are more driven by combating stress and by combating anxiety than they are by finding pleasant, stimulating and enriching experiences. We are many that are more driven by stress and by anxiety and it's when we are acting and responding to stress and anxiety that we are going into our inferior type. That's why INFJs can come across as ESTPs or INTPs or ESFJs. That's why ENFPs can come across as ISTJs, ENTJs or ISFPs. It's uh, anxiety bubbling up, taking you over, fall, making you fall in the grip. And uh, it's also this that makes intuitives such interesting uh, types when in the grip of sensing because intuitive it's like this is common this is not rare this is not the result of psychological disorder it's not necessarily um, a sign of trauma in a person a lot of people are healthily in sensing at work or in school and that's uh, just how it's supposed to be we are supposed to use sensing at certain times in certain situations we need to do it all types need to have a healthy relationship to sensing but often to find this relationship, uh, you have to get rid of the anxieties and the stress associated with your inferior functions. You have to get rid of the anxieties and the stress associated with your sensing function. When intuitives are driven by anxious stress sensing, anxious sensation or stressful sensations, uh, they are going to approach sensations differently than the sensor would. The sensor ent entertains sensation with a sense of thrill or a positive mindset. Uh, usually for a sensor, uh, the experience of sensations is in itself pleasant, fun, stimulating. But for the intuitive type, uh, sensations are more an inconvenience, a distraction, a problem that must be dealt with. It's like having to uh, deal with something because of work. It's like having to deal with something uh, because uh, out of necessity rather than out of the sense of fun or sense of joy. So it's like it's being in this work mode. It's being in this mode, uh, this uh, automatic or this P, this, this pet peeve, this first sense of frustration that uh, we go into sensing. Intuitives uh, that become too frustrated with the world or with reality can actually become taken over by reality and that's like it. The more frustrated you are with something, the more in the grip of it you are. The more angry or the more uh, worried you are about something, the more in the grip of it you become. The more time you spend thinking about how you need more discipline as an ENFP, the more in the grip of introverted sensing you become because introverted sensing is in many ways about discipline and it's the fear of not 
not being disciplined enough that gets you to kind of fall in the grip of it. It's that sense that, oh, I should probably be more organized, I should probably uh, be more traditional, I should probably uh, be more humble. It's like those fears, those worries that gets us to really fall in the grip of these inferior functions. Without stress and without anxiety, we wouldn't be able to handle sensation at all. We would just find it boring, we'd find it draining, and we would just ignore it. But thanks to stress, we can actually do it. And uh, when an NFP in the grip of this worry starts engaging in introverted sensing and starts becoming more disciplined, that's also when they can experience this false sense of relief, uh, this false sense of stimulation. Uh, because, wow, I was able to organize myself, I was able to be on time, I was able to be more disciplined, I was able to uh, be more moderate, uh, and I uh, was able to be humble. Uh, that gets a temporary relief of that anxiety or that sense of stress. And that uh, temporary relief of anxiety or stress from sensing is what gets you, you can confuse this with joy, you can confuse this with being stimulated when it's actually not stimulating at all, it's just the sense that oh I used to be stressed but now I'm not as stressed anymore or oh I used to be worried but now for the moment as I shut up and didn't express my views and my new ideas I feel a less, a little less anxious because um, it, uh, yeah it's the it's these um, these little worries, then this sense of worry that really can get to us and that's why we can fall in the grip of our inferior functions. Often what I would advise is to make sure that you acknowledge, because these anxieties can be real, it can be out of a preservation instinct, uh, sometimes we do have to shut up and uh, hide our views or creativity to make sure that the group doesn't uh, cut us off. Sometimes we do have to uh, uh, ignore our ideas and uh, do what everyone else does. Sometimes we do have to uh, be more disciplined, sometimes we do have to be more organized because that's what work in the situation of uh, life to, in the moment demands of us. And uh, it's uh, about finding strategies to make sure that you don't have to do this too much. And it's about making sure you don't let these anxieties and this stress take you over. You can recognize this anxiety when it comes up and you can tell yourself that, oh, I'm actually worried about uh, other people laughing at my new ideas. Uh, oh, I'm actually uh, frustrated with uh, constantly having to uh, adjust and not being able to work on my own ideas. Uh, it's by acknowledging this frustration or this fear that you can actually be aware of your problem and your issue. And uh, you can think uh, logically about if this is a real anxiety, if this is a real need. And you can think about how you can make sure that you uh, don't let this take over you. you. Perhaps you can respond to it in the moment and accept that, but think about in the future, what can I do to make sure I don't have to be like this, that I don't have to be this neurotic, this worried, this concerned, this stressed. Because stress is only healthy to a certain degree. Uh, stress can help us reach our goals, uh, but after a certain extent it can be really deeply unhealthy. After a certain extent anxiety, while it can give us a sense, the ability to deal with our problems, sometimes we have to be aware of our emotions to deal with them. If it becomes over a certain level, it can actually cause deeper traumas and deeper issues in us. And uh, it can cause us to become more irrational and to act out more in anger or in fear. I tend to say what an INFJ who is uh, anxious and is overwhelmed looks like. It's, uh, they are usually frustrated, prone to mood swings, restless, and constantly in this tense state. Uh, and it's only by letting go of that relaxation, by, of the, that stress, of that anxiety, of that anger. Yes, anger can be an anxiety as well, it's another form of sensitivity. Uh, that you can become better in touch with your intuition. Of course, that's a key here. Uh, becoming actualized is by identifying your habits, what you love, what you want to do, what your passion is, and by pursuing that. Uh, it's not the case that, oh, I found out I'm an ENFP. Now I should become more balanced and I should start being more like an ISTJ so I can be the perfect citizen, model citizen of society, good at everything, but... Because the problem here is that 
in doing this, in uh, becoming more like an ISTJ, sure, you can feel that sense of gratification because society goes, wow, you're great, you're like uh, the perfect worker, just what we wanted, balanced. But you won't feel that sense of passion, you won't feel that sense of stimulation, that sense of, wow, I'm doing something I find motivating, fun, stimulating, enriching. You, if you ask yourself honestly, you won't have that. You'll have that a balanced career, that balanced situation, that stability, but you won't have that joy. Um, and that's it. Like we are sometimes taken over by our work, by our practical concerns, by our fears, by our stress. And uh, while stress and anxiety can be a temporary way to survive and to handle negative situations, it's not meant to be a long-term state. It's not meant to be a something that you're supposed to be stuck in. And it's not meant to cloud your actions and who you are. So as an intuitive, find a way to respond to these issues and find a way to uh, pursue what you find truly inherently stimulating, fun, enriching, invigorating. Because that's what it means to have flow, that's what it means to be happy, that's what it means to have a good life. To have a good life you have to be true to yourself, you have to pursue your motivations and do what you love. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, if you did leave a like, share or subscribe and as always may your neurons be with you.